a lot of reader buzz for this, evidently, and we're talking about Gut Ghost number one. Oh my god, yes. Gut Ghost number one was the talk of our Patreon Discord uh, chat for the last couple of days. All of my Discord people, you know who you are. Um, you guys had Gut Ghost fever this week. Um, this is not a book that Brian and I have been too hype about for different reasons. Um, Brian, uh, I'll let you kind of talk about you know your feelings on it. For me, um, while originally I was kind of on board with the uh, Gut Ghost hype, um, you know, I, I got to meet Enzo Garza at Heroes Con. I thought, you know, I checked out the Ash Can. I felt good about this book. I didn't realize how many times Gut Ghost has truly appeared previously um, to this book being released. At this point, we're talking about a free comic book day issue, an Ash Can, Heavy Metal Magazine, a self published version, um, a. I think it's Italian released book on, I think it's like Woe Comics or something of that nature. And then I've got a shout out, Mighty Mel V, Mel V from the Mighty Mel V YouTube channel, uh, home of the Drunken Chat, um, who posted on Instagram today a piece of his Easel of Elevation. And he pointed out that Gut Ghost actually appears on the back cover of the spread number 24, spread 24 which is a popular Justin Jordan book, which we're going to talk about a little Justin Jordan as well. So it is incredible how many times Gut Ghost has appeared before. But I definitely want to say Bolo on that spread book because if Gut Ghost continues to be popular, that spread 24 book isn't like super readily available, but at the same point isn't expensive. And it certainly predates this number one. Um, so that's definitely something to keep an eye out for. Uh, now there was... We're going to talk about the variants right here, right, Brian? Yes. I got that right. Well, I got the secret variant. Right. So we've got secret variant and a Scout Web Store exclusive. Now, Scout does the Web Store exclusives for every one of their number one releases. That's that's pretty typical. Um, it usually carries about a $20 price tag. It's usually limited to a few hundred copies. Um, so that that's pretty typical of, of Scout's kind of release formula. Um, but... Something I didn't really love was the fact that I had heard from, again, Andy Tomberlin of the Indie Spotlight series. He reached out to me and was like, hey, man, you know, we can't publicize this, but there's a secret variant. And um, I was like, okay, that's that's something that could be major. People, that could get people's attention. And the rumor was there was a 350 print run. James uh, Hake, the CEO, said there's actually 300. He believed originally that 50 were going to the creator. But then, apparently, only 100 of those copies ended up at LCSs, and 200 got put on the Scout web store. Now, the problem I have with that, and, and it's not, again, I'm, it's not really, I'm not faulting Scout, they're doing what they got to do, but at the same point, um, it causes a couple, first off, it's not a secret variant when you put it up for pre-sale, so I don't like, I don't like that term secret, um, you know, it's maybe an unannounced variant, but, you know, the typical secret variants that we've seen in the market hit stores and you don't know it till kind of they show up from Diamond. We knew about this one a couple of days in advance because they had put it up on their website. The other problem I have is that, you know, they were selling it for $10, which is certainly, you know, not a total gouge price. But if I'm at LCS and I get this book in and the publisher selling it for $10, i am going to mark it up. So I think it ends up inflating that price. The beauty of secret variants is that hunt, um, going to the LCS and trying to find that book on the shelf that is rarer than the regular cover. We saw that with whether it was the pink signatures from Skybound Books, whether it was that little frog on Oblivion Song 2, um, whether it was Marvel with that z silly zilly, zilly pig book <laughs> that had the poop emoji yeah. um, you know, those were all um, examples of books that caused buzz. And, I mean, get that, that pig book is the prime example. There's Nobody would have cared about that book uh, had that emoji not been there. Um, and that causes true demand. This was a little more manufactured demand by, by selling on the site. Um, again, we've had James Hake on the channel. He's a good dude. Uh, it's just not the way I necessarily would have done it. We, i got to keep it real here on the Sybil Hunts Comics YouTube channel and the CBSI Bolo Show. Um, 
I don't love that move. Right. I mean, my whole thing about the book is based purely on mostly ignorance because I just didn't understand what the buzz was for the book, why it was getting so much buzz, especially like you said, for someone that it's not really a first appearance when the characters appeared multiple times in heavy metal and other books. But I just considered I was not in the know. And if, it, if everyone's liking the book that much and it's moving, good for them. It's just not a book that was interesting to me. So uh, I'm going to sit this one out. <laughs> Well, and then there were, we got so many people in the community that went FOMO chasing it and ended up, you know, finding out, like, LCSs didn't really order it that heavy. So, you know, a lot of LCSs, man, they're just going through that previews, and, you know, you see a title like this, nothing necessarily screamed to them they had to order it. And then you got to ask yourself, are you buying it because you think it's going to be some great read, or are you buying it just because everybody else is talking about it, which is why, again, I say... Don't just buy every book because it's on a bolo list or it's on Sibelman's Comics Weekly Picks. And I use our content as an example. I'm saying, man, I'm being transparent as I can be. Yeah. Um, there's certainly tons of YouTube comic channels out there that are out there spotlighting upcoming books. Um, I'm not trying to throw shade on any of them. So I'm even I'm saying directly with us, like you know, you don't don't just buy a book because somebody says it could be hot. Um, you know, you got to do it on your own. But if people really believe in this book, more power to them. I know. Again, Mel V from the Mighty Mel V YouTube channel, the Hot and Cold Show, uh, host of the Drunken Chat. He he was huge on this book. He's talked about this book for months. Um, but for him, he's a really a big fan of the creator. So it's more of a personal thing. For me, as a long-term speculator, I don't see this necessarily going anywhere because do you really think there's going to be a gut ghost movie? You know, I, I don't. That's not something I can foresee. So you'd be looking animated. I heard somebody say, "Oh, it's the next Rick and Morty." But that is a big ask. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just, and especially the, with the amount of comics that get released each week, it's just easy for a book to get buried. And attention gets shifted to, to, other, to newer books and stuff just kind of... But who knows? Might be the, the next great book for all we know. Yeah, and I'm fine being wrong. I'm not going to get everything right. And that's why we say, you know, you guys got to you know, buy what you like. Um, this was just not one that I think both Brian and I are Brian and I are rarely in agreement about uh, new comic book day releases, but this was one both of us were kind of like, um, yeah, you know, that's not that one's not really for us, and you know, I definitely think it has a chance of showing up on the hot ten list uh, tomorrow. Uh, there's no doubt it, it could end up doing that. I, I don't know yet, but you know, I, I have no doubt it could because it's certainly doing numbers and it's moving units, but you know. Well, I'm like I said, I'm more of a long term guy because if you got to make if you got to make those web store orders, you got to get them in stock. And I'm a little bit afraid that the prices that this book's going for, it's not going to maintain because by the time all of you get those books in the mail, there will be a glutton of these books put online. Because you got to ask yourself, are collectors buying this book, or is it simply, um, you know, is it simply speculators buying for the resale purpose? If we're just selling to ourselves, then we're, you're going to end up getting stuck with books and prices will drop. Right. But, yeah, although I wasn't a fan of Gut Ghost, one book that didn't make the bolo list that I do enjoy reading that came out this week was uh, Category Zero Number 3. And I I just enjoy that because it's a great story. I love the writer for it. But, uh, and I had, did get an advanced copy. He, Adam Camille usually sends me a PDF version of it to read a couple weeks before release. And it's one book that I've enjoyed reading, especially for not being a big X-Men fan. I do enjoy that book. It's got similar feel with a virus that turns people, gives them mutations. But See, yeah, and I, I love that book too. Um, you actually put me on that. I think I'd read the first two issues before I jumped on board and read them. Um, but yeah, I'm surprised you like that book, not being a big X-Men fan. But yeah, we can't say enough about that book. That's a sleeper book. That's a book to take a look at now because the market isn't talking about it, but it could heat up in the future. Right. 